Hey everyone, it's pressing the button and we are again back with another Unity tutorial. So the main goal of this part is to add a player, add movement and add a boundary for that player so that they don't escape the scene. Now I'm just going to preview those things so we have a good idea of what we want to come out of this session with. Okay, so as you can see, we have our player moving left and right so far, and we've got boundaries set so our player can't escape the view of the main camera. Now that's pretty important because we don't want our player to accidentally lose the player object, even though it won't be too difficult to recover it, seeing that we're only changing the position of the player on the x-axis. So I'll just end that preview and start from scratch. So as you can see I've removed the player object from the scene so we can have a nice little walkthrough on how to actually get them in the scene in the first place. So what I've done is I've prepared a PNG image, a couple of them, I was just messing around with these, and these are going to be used as textures for our player object. Now the first thing that we want to do is we want to go to the scene view and to add a new object we want to right click, go to 3D object and then quad. This is the kind of object that we're going to be using and we use the same thing for our background. Now let's focus on some of the positioning of this element. So if we just toggle the 2D mode right there, we can switch to our 3D view of the scene to get a better idea of what's happening. So we can see that our quad does appear in the view of the main camera, but I just want to do this properly instead of just using the nodes to shift it around. So I'm going to set the transform value at about 4, which if you'll remember, that's just above our background quad, which means that it won't interfere with how we see the player object. Now another thing that we might want to do is to change the name of this quad. So if you left click twice, slowly, you'll see that you can change the name of this object, and I'm just going to call this player. We can do the same for the background, so let's just call that background. Uh, temp because it's only temporary and it's a template and let's take a look at our player object now this is quite barren and this is probably not what we want so here we've got some images for our player that I have prepared now let's just see what happens when we drag our texture onto our quad just as we saw with the background this is actually really dark and it's going to be hard for our player to see now we've got a couple of options, but what we really want to happen is for this black space that the tank image is resting on to be invisible. So our original method was to go to materials, find our material which is tank copy, and then set the shader to unlit texture. Now that's all fine for actually seeing our player, but we're still left a bit unsatisfied by the fact that we can still see this space behind our tank object which we don't want. So instead of using unlit texture this time, on the shader menu we're going to select mobile, particles and then go to additive. And as you can see we've got the intended result which is that our tank shape is very visible and there's no space around it making it look off. So on the Y coordinate we're going to take our object down to minus 4 and then press enter. We're good for the X because we want it to be right in the center at origin and our Z doesn't really matter because we set that earlier. Now the next thing that we want to do is add a component so that we can reference this object when we come around to actually producing the script for its movement. So we're going to click on add component, physics, and then we're going to click on rigid body. Now we've got a rigid body component. If you remember from the last tutorial, we don't want to have use gravity checked, so we'll just remove that. And is kinematic is not important for right now. And for now, I'll just be ignoring this little message at the bottom that's telling me otherwise. So now that we've done that, we want to go to add component again. We want to go to new script. And then we're going to type in the name of our new script, which will be player movement. As you can see, I've already got a script called player movement. And we're going to switch over to Mono Develop to see how that script works and how we can build it up. But really quickly, I think it's important to show you how you'll be able to open your script once you add it. So if you find your script here and you double click on it, then you'll be able to open it in Mono Develop. Or if you find your script and then press open here, it will open up in Mono Develop. Also, this might be a minor thing that I only experienced, but there is another scripting program called Visual Studio, which I chose to uninstall 
in favor of mono develop so if you're having any issues with that then just uninstall visual studio and mono develop will be there by default so you won't have to worry about reinstalling it or anything like that anyway i will see you guys in mono develop Okay, so here we are in Mono Develop, and straight away we have the full script because I've prepared it just before this tutorial to make sure that everything works here, and I can confirm that it already does. So I'm just going to take you step by step to show you how you'll be able to add in this script yourself. So after the very first two lines in your script, you'll want to make a couple of spaces by pressing enter just like this, if you can hear that and you're going to want to type in system.serializable now what this does is it's going to enable us to have our boundary public class and the public floats that are attached to it which are going to affect the space in which the player object can move so you want to type in system.serializable in square brackets and then public class boundary and let me just demonstrate how you'd add the next bit so once you come to the point where you've already added your public class boundary you just want to add two squiggly brackets in between them press enter and then type in your script after that you want to press enter again just to make sure everything's spaced out neatly and you want to just leave the public class details alone because they'll be there by default and they're best left alone so you want to start off with some squiggly brackets and make a public float for speed and you want public boundary boundary also now what these do is that they allow us to change certain values in the inspector once we enter unity so we don't have to come back to the script and say speed equals 5 find out that that's not great speed equals 10 find out that that's not great so we're not constantly switching windows and the same goes for our other boundary public class so we want to start off with void fixed update followed by two normal brackets and then two squigglies and if you were here for our last Unity tutorial, which was the bullets one, uh, you'll remember that we had two float lines. One was for move vertical and one was for move horizontal. Now in Space Invaders, the tank typically only moves from left to right. So our float is going to be move horizontal and we're going to be using input.getAxis and then brackets and then in quotation marks, horizontal, brackets again and remember to add your little semicolon at the end so we don't have any passing errors. And now we've got a line which relates to our movement. And here I've used a new vector two which references the X and the Y values of our movement. And for the X values I've put move horizontals, which means that once we press an input key for our horizontal movement that will occur. And for our Y value, which is up and down, I've put 0.0f because I want that to just remain as it is and I don't want any movement along the y axis and the z axis we're not too concerned about. Now I've got another line to reference our rigid body component which we added to our player and the line after it sets up the calculations for our general movement of the player saying that the velocity that the object will move at will be the result of movement times speed. Speed being a factor that we can change as it is a public float and movement being a variable that we have here which occurs only on the x-axis. We then move on to positioning the object so we type rigidbody.position equals new vector 3 and I've used a vector 3 quantity because I want to make sure that we've definitely clamped the object in place and that it's only moving on the x-axis. So what I've done here, as you can see with a vector 3, you start off with the float for x, the float for y, and the float for z. So here we have our details for the x values, our details for the y values, and I've added an integer 3 for our z axis, which I could change to 4 just to match what we have already in our project. With these lines of script, we'll be able to set where our player is able to move and to be in the view of the main camera. And these will be changed using these public floats, which you see referenced down here. Once we've done that, we just need to close up all of our brackets, make sure that we've got everything tidy, neat, in order. We've got all our semicolons where we need them. We've got all our brackets where we need them, so we don't have any passing errors. And that should be it for our player movement script right now. So to make sure we don't lose any of that and we can actually use it in the project, we go to File and then Save 
and then we can return to Unity. Just one final look at the script so you've got every detail that you need and let's go back. So as you can see here because I already had my script prepared I can add it to my player object because I didn't add it as a new script so I can go to add component scripts and then player movement. Now we can see that we've got all of the public float values in our inspector we can change those. So I'm going to change our speed to 5 and I'm going to leave the boundaries as they are and just play the game and see what happens. So as expected our player isn't able to move from the very center of the game. This is because all of its boundary coordinates are set to origin which means that even though I can get a tiny bit of movement here I really can't go anywhere and I'll just be stuck here. So we need to change those values. So for the Y value, we're going to change the Y minimum and maximum values to the current value of the position of the object on the Y axis, which is minus 4. So let's just input minus 4 here, and input minus 4 there, and then press enter. Now let's see what happens when we click play. Okay, so we've got our tank where we want it now, on the Y axis, but we don't have that movement that we need on the x-axis. So let's find out how far we want our tank to be able to travel on the x-axis. The first thing that we want to do to the first thing that we want to do to find this out is to go back to the scene view, go to 2D and just literally move our player object along and see what happens as we do that. So we can see that minus 3 is a good value for having our player still visible in the game view but not too constrained in their movement and not too far out that they could cheat and hang on the sides. So we'll have our minimum x value as minus 3 and by logic we should have our maximum x value as 3. So let's just reset the coordinates for this and make it so that our minimum value on the x-axis is minus 3 and our maximum value on the x-axis is 3. Now let's play the game and see what happens. Okay so as we can see we've got our desired movement along the x-axis. We can see that our player almost leaves the scene but they are still in it enough to be vulnerable to any attacks from enemies which we'll be concentrating on later into the series but in the next lesson we're going to be focusing on our player shots and the barriers which protect us we're going to be finding ways to make it so that they deteriorate over time instead of just disappear after one shot and to do that we're going to have to do some detailed finagling of some gliders and see how we can instantiate the different looks of our barriers as they deteriorate but for now that has been another press any button tutorial concentrating on player movement and constraining that player movement so that our player doesn't lose the player game object. Thank you for watching, there will be more videos on the way and as always I will be back another time.